In this video, I'll be talking to you about simple interest. So first of all, do you know what simple interest is? Well, it's interest paid on the principal only. Now, what's the principal? Well, when you borrow money or uh, save money, the starting amount is the principal. So if I go to the bank and I put my money in a savings account, the amount that I put in there is my principal. All right, what is interest? Interest is the dollar amount we get paid for lending money or we pay for borrowing money. And it's normally expe expressed as a rate, like 8% or 3%. So what that means is after one year, you would earn 3% of the amount of your principal. All right, what's credit? Well, credit is your ability to borrow money or get something of value such as a car and pay for it later. Now, what that means is, you know, you go, let's talk about buying a car. You go, they give you the car, even though you can't pay all of the money to pay it, you know, for the full price. And so they're willing to let you drive away with that car, even though you didn't already pay for it. So normally you end up making payments for some period of time and you know all to say your credit is what allows you to borrow that car. In other words, they believe that you're going to pay it back. Now, your credit worthiness is what determines how much others will allow you to borrow and what interest rate. So if you have good credit, they're more willing to let you borrow things uh, in greater amounts at lower interest rates. If your credit is not all that good, then it's, it's not the same. It's going to be more expensive. And they're probably not going to loan you as much. What is security or collateral? It's an asset such as a car or a house that a lender accepts as a guarantee for giving you a loan. So in other words, you know, like when you get a car loan, if you don't pay that car off, they're going to come get the car. So that way the bank knows that, you know, they're either going to make money off of you, hopefully, because you make your payments, they're going to earn the interest that you pay. But if you don't pay, they get they can go and get that car and at least it'll cover the amount that they let you borrow or it should be close to that. What is a cosigner? Well, I actually have a little story to tell you here about this one. My youngest son turned 18 on April the 18th uh, one year and um, he was he left the next day and he was off on his own. He was like he just could not wait to get out of the house. He was tar tired of having to follow mom and dad's rules. He wanted to go pave his own way. So he moved to Oregon. And sure enough, a couple weeks later, he called. He said, Dad, I got a problem. He said, they won't let me uh, sign this lease by myself for this apartment because I don't have enough credit. I don't even know if he had any credit. So in other words, um, you know, they weren't willing to let him even rent the apartment because of his credit. And so by, for us co-signing for him, what we were basically saying is if he didn't pay his rent, we would cover it. Now, we did it because we trusted that he would pay. But at the same time, we also knew that we needed to be prepared um, to pay if he didn't. So in other words, you wouldn't want to sign as a co-signer if you couldn't cover the cost of that if the person doesn't pay. Um, he did pay. But anyway, a co-signer is a person who agrees to pay a borrower's debt if he or she defaults on a loan. It, again, it's not just a loan. It could be a situation like that with the apartment. So default just means they don't pay their debt. All right, the next thing here, uh, it says, write the simple interest formula and explain what each letter represents. All right, so do you know the simple interest formula? 
it's I equals PRT. So I is for interest, P is for principal, which is, we said, the starting amount. R is the interest rate, which is um, normally written as a decimal. And then the time is normally in years, unless it's stated otherwise. All right, let's go on to the next slide. It says you deposited $1,500 into an account that earns simple interest. If the interest rate was 2.4%, find the interest earned after three years. So here, all we're doing is finding the interest, the simple interest rate. So it's I equals PRT. The principal is $1,500. The interest rate is 2.4%, so we'll write that as 0.024 times the time, notice the time here is three years. And so when you multiply that out, you get $108, $108. So here's the thing, think about this. You put $1,500 into an account, and three years later, you're $108 richer. It's probably not all that exciting. <laughs> So you can see why low interest rates aren't so great when you're trying to save money. That's why a lot of people will put their money into the stock market or into other things that can give them a better return or a better interest rate. Let's look at number two. Christina borrowed $2,000 at a simple interest rate of 12% for one year. Now 12%, that's a lot. Oh, actually, that, this is not... This is not um, earning us interest, this is Christina borrowing, and so she's paying 12%, and that's t generally how it works. You pay a lot more to borrow than you do, is, uh, than you earn when you put money into the bank. Just doesn't seem fair, does it? Anyway, it says, how much interest will she have to pay on the loan? Well, it's simple, notice, it's important that you notice these words, simple interest rate. Later on, we'll, uh, in the next section, we'll be dealing with compounded interest. So, you know, when the problems get mixed together, it's important that you're reading the words carefully because it makes a difference. So in this case, we're going to use the same formula, I equals PRT, and the principal is $2,000. The interest rate, written as a decimal, is 0.12, or 12 hundredths and the time is one year. So if you multiply that out, you should get $240. So is it worth it to you to spend $240 so that you can borrow $2,000 for a year? Basically, when you pay interest, what you're saying is I'm willing to pay more than what something's worth. Maybe I got $2,000 out to pay for I don't know, um, a real fancy bike or something. Was it, was it worth $240 to have it now as opposed to waiting until I saved the whole amount? You know, that, those are the kinds of decisions that you want to make, or that you have to make. Let's look at B. How much does she pay to the lender after one year? We call that the date of maturity, the date that she has to pay the money back. Well, let's see. She borrowed $2,000, plus she has to pay back the $240 in interest, and so she's going to end up paying $2,240. Let her see. Suppose Christina only borrowed the money for 90 days. What is the interest on the loan? So we're going to use the same formula. We're going to get 2,000 times our interest rate, which is still 12%, times our time. Now, 90 days, now think about this, our time is in years. So it's 90 out of 360 days. So for these types of problems, we use 360 days for a year. And so this reduces to one-fourth. And so our time in years is one-fourth, or 0.25, now I'm going to go ahead and put one-fourth in here and I would encourage you to see if you can plug this expression into your calculator and get the answer uh, directly. 
and you should get $60. So $60 to borrow $2,000 for 90 days. All right, let's move on to the next problem. Number three, your good friend lends you $100 for a month and charges you $15 in interest. What interest rate did you pay? All right. So I don't know if you feel like this is a good deal. Is this a good friend and not so good friend? Uh, a friend that's trying to make a buck off his friend? Anyway, 15 bucks off his friend. So let's go ahead and use the simple interest formula here. And the interest is $15. The principal is $100. We're looking for the interest rate, which is R, and the time, let's see, is for one month, that's 1 12th of a year. So I'm going to go ahead and move this up to the right here. You're going to have 15 equals 1 12th times 100. Now I'm going to go ahead and multiply that out, and it's a decimal number. If you're going to do that, you want to carry at least three or four decimals so that your accuracy is good enough for what we're doing. And so we get 8.333R. Now, if you actually multiply 100 times 1 twelfth, you get 100 over 12, which is 50 over 6, or 25 over 3. So you could do 25 thirds times R. But this will work just fine. So we're going to solve for r. We need to get r by itself by dividing both sides by 8.33. And you get about 1.8. And so remember, this is an interest rate. When we change 1.8 to a percent, we get 180%. Now, if you had a credit card, most credit cards for college students have an interest rate of about 20%. So obviously, if you had a credit card, um, well, I guess you'd, if you could, you'd want to pay with your credit card. But if you didn't have that ability, maybe you have to pay cash here. Then I guess you wouldn't have a choice. But you're paying a much higher percentage rate. Now, here's the thing I want to point out to you: borrowing money short time is difficult. Nor you're not going to go to the bank and they're going to lend you a hundred dollars or at least that's not something that they're likely to do. Or if they did, you're going to pay a pretty good interest rate. Um, I don't, honestly, I don't think that's that common. Getting small loans can be a real challenge. So a lot of people use payday loan types of places. Their credit cards are maxed or they don't even have credit cards. And so they end up going to payday loan places or um, the other one is pawn shops, and I'm just telling you, if you're going to those places, it's really expensive to borrow money short term. And so if you have a friend that will lend you a few bucks, that, that's, a, that's a good reason to do it. On the other hand, you could lose that friend real fast, you know, if things turn bad. So you got to be careful. So the moral of the story is hopefully you'll take good care of your finances so you're not having to, to borrow small amounts of money from people. Anyway, what I wanted to mention here is that the cost of a payday loan runs about 400 to 600%. This is in the state of Texas, and it's pretty typical throughout the country. And it really, you know, it's when you count the fees that you realize how, how much you're paying. It's, it's a lot of money. Normally, payday loans, you know, let's say you get paid every two weeks, you're borrowing money for two weeks and you're in a, you end up paying quite a quite a bit to do that all right let's go ahead and look at future value it says the future value a of p dollars at a simple interest rate r again written as a decimal for t years is given by the formula a equals p times the quantity one plus r times t so notice a is the future value. P is called the present value. And so when you see those words, um, th that's what we mean. So the principle that we've been talking about is 
the present amount of or the 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 starting amount. So its value is the what's present what it's presently worth. So that's why they call it the present value. A or the future value is the value of that money at the end of the loan. All right, so let's look at number four. It says Amy borrowed twelve hundred dollars from her aunt to purchase a new computer for school. Seems like a reasonable idea. If the loan had a simple interest rate of 4.5% for a period of three years, find the future value of the loan. All right, so you can see the words, you know, find the future value here. And notice it is simple interest rate. So we're still dealing with simple interest here, which you'll see, you know, you can see it up here in the formula. So let's go ahead and write down the formula. Oh, by the way, I'm, I'm just, I forgot to mention this. If you actually distribute here, you can see that this is equal to this formula here. So it's not hard to make sense of this. The, the future value is the present value plus the interest that's earned in that time, you know, whatever the time of the loan is. All right, now we're ready to do number four. So here's our formula. So she borrowed $1,200, that's the present value. And then it'll be one plus R, which is going to be 0 0.045 times the time, notice it's three years here, so three. And so you should be able to put that into your calculator just like it looks and you get $1,362. Now, what if I said, how much interest did she pay? Well, it wouldn't be too hard to do that. It'd be the 1362, the future value, minus the present value, $1,200, and you can see that she paid $162. Now you could also use the formula PRT and that would work too. All right, let's move on to the last slide. It says you borrowed $2,500 from a friend so that you can buy a car. If you pay your friend $2,750 or $2,750 in six months, what simple interest rate will you pay? So he's like, man, I really want this car. I need to borrow a little bit more money and uh, I'll, I'll pay you back in six months. I've got some money coming down or, or whatever. So let's go ahead and plug these numbers into the formula. Notice we're looking for the simple interest rate. We're looking for R. So let's go ahead and uh, get started here. So the formula for uh, future value is, is here. And so let's go ahead and plug in the numbers now. You're going to pay your friend $2,750. That's going to be the future value. The current value is $2,500. And that's going to be times 1 plus the interest rate, which we don't know, times the time. Notice this is 6 months. So that's half a year, or we could write that as 0.5. Now I'm going to go ahead and simplify the right side before I try to solve for R. So we're going to need to distribute. 2,500 times 1 is 2,500. And 2,500 times 0.5, and then that'll be times R. So we're basically taking half of 2,500. That's going to be 1,250R. And so um, if we're solving this equation, we want to get R by itself. So we need to get rid of this 2,500. So let's subtract 2,500 on both sides. And when we do that, we get 250 on the left and 1250R on the right. So we're one step away. We just need to divide by 1,250 to get R by itself. And so R is going to be 0 0.2. Now remember, this is an interest rate, so it would be written as 20%. So uh, that's not a bad interest rate. I mean, that's what a typical credit card would be. All right, so let's go ahead and um, 
I just want to show you that you can actually check this. If you plug in all the numbers and you simplify the right side, you'll see that it does equal 2750. I should say if you calculate the right side. All right, let's look at number six. Determine the present value P that must be invested now at a simple interest rate of 5% to have a future value of $10,000 in five years. So again, I'm gonna write the formula. Notice we're looking for P here. So we should have all the other information. So the future value, that's my A, is equal to P, which we don't know, times one plus R, our interest rate is 0 0.05 times T, notice it's five years here. And so let's go ahead and simplify what's in the parentheses here. This is 10,000 is equal to P times one plus 0.25. That's gonna be 1.25P. So $10,000 or 10,000 is equal to 1.25P. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this up here. And we need to divide each side by 1.25. And so we're gonna get 8,000. And again, uh, well, let's go ahead and write that down, $8,000. It wouldn't be hard to check this. We could just plug 8,000 into the formula. And if you simplify or, or calculate this right side, you'll see that it does work. All right, so that's the end of this video.